ओके विदत ओके विदत कैन यू हियर मी यस आई कैन ओनली टू एंड यस गुना चिलक एंड हु एल्स and the children ha eh? i will remind the others to join samdrone okay <clears throat> anybody record in this Okay, now five. Okay. Is anybody recording it? I think it's better to record. Hamdrun, it has been recorded. Okay. I remember uh, Tushar asking me uh, whether anybody records it or not. Now, if you record, then children can use that for writing their. Article. Yes, Ham Dhruvani. Uh, Tushar confirmed like about twenty minutes ago that uh, Brian had uh, confirmed uh, he has the recordings from the previous talks. Ah, oh, that's good. That's good. Uh, we like to hear more children coming. Only eight are there now, including you and me. I think last time there were more than that. Yes. Shall we begin? Yes, Ham Dhruvani. A few of the kids are, are engaged otherwise and could not join. Looks like this is going. To be. Okay. Uh, they can listen to the talk uh, uh, since you are recording it. After that, they can listen to it after uh, today's session. Now, today we are going to talk on right effort. Uh, our Theme of this uh, series of talks 
is the Noble Eightfold Path. We discuss right understanding, right thought, right speech, right action, right livelihood, right today is the number six, right effort. <coughs> so, uh, making effort, the Buddha gave uh, four qualities. They are uh, arousing our will, will to make effort, and making effort, striving on uh, uh, energy, and uh, exertion mind. These are the four qualities. So we have to make effort to do something wholesome. This is called right effort. We call it right effort and the Buddha call it right effort because there is a wrong effort. This is just the opposite of wrong effort. It is very easy to make wrong effort. Our mind, uh, especially when we are tempted with greed, jealousy, fear, and so forth, we normally cannot make right effort. We have to make a special uh, wish, uh, determination to make right effort. It is the right effort that brings us uh, success, happiness, peace, and liberation ourselves from various stressful situations. When we, you all know, we have to make effort to uh, study, effort to make good friendship, you have to make effort to uh, be uh, successful in your uh, work, uh, finding right kind of job, we have to make effort. If we are lazy, and uh, don't make effort, nobody is going to uh, make, uh, bring us our uh, bread on the table, our clothes, medicine, houses, and so forth. None of these things can come to us naturally, even lions, the king of animals is the lion. If the lion sits in one place, opening his mouth, waiting for animals to jump into his mouth, no animal will jump. Effort, even elef uh, the lion has to make effort to find food, go around, look for a suitable uh, place and animals to catch. And therefore, even the lion, no matter how powerful he is, has to make effort. So we, he, as human beings, must make effort to be very successful. When we make effort, there are four stages. Four stages. One is called restraint. We must use, we must restrain ourselves with great effort. Restraint also has various ways of restraining. 
One is observing precept. It is called Sila Sangvara. Sangvara means restraining. So Sila Sangvara means observing precept, rules and regulations, etiquettes, manners. We have to observe them. That is called Sila Sangvara. Then uh, Virya Sangvara. We have to make effort to restrain ourselves. If we don't, we just get carried away with all kind of wrong things. Then Sati Sangvara. Mindfulness. We have to restrain ourselves with mindful being mindful. Practicing mindfulness. Remaining mindful. Then Jnana Sangvara. Jnana means wisdom. We can, when we grow, we have to be very uh, wise to choose the right thing so that others, we will not get into trouble, others will not blame us, and we can become successful. The last is uh, Khanti Sangvara. Khanti means uh, patience. Patience is absolutely necessary in every situation. When you are associating with your friends, with parents, teachers, neighbors, we always must be patient. If somebody says something to hurt us, we don't retaliate very quickly. We have to have patience. Patient doesn't mean sitting in one place doing nothing. Patient is waiting to act correctly, rightly, at the using right words at the right place, uh, to the using right words uh, to the right person at right time and with uh, right uh, intention and waiting for the combination of all of them to act is called patience. So these are the ways of we restraining ourselves. And a person who restrains with these uh, means will always be successful and uh, uh, become uh, prosperous and happy. The second way or second kind of effort, we, we why we want to restrain ourselves? To prevent uh, unskillful, what we call unwholesome or harmful uh, things, harmful thoughts, harmful words, harmful deeds. When, before they arise in our mind, we must learn to prevent them from arising. As we all know, prevention is better than cure. When we prevent ourselves from getting into wrong, uh, using wrong words, doing wrong things, uh, we can hold it at bay and then we won't get into trouble. We don't do wrong things. <clears throat> That's a prevention. Always, see, these days we have we are suffering from COVID-19. COVID-19 is a very dangerous that kills people. We have to prevent ourselves from getting it, getting COVID uh, infection. So that is why we have to wear masks and. Uh, uh, maintaining distance, washing our hands, and so forth. Uh, prevention. Then the second uh, is the effort to overcome that. When we get into some, any kind of uh, wrong thing, suppose we have a, a wrong, unwholesome thought, 
anger, hatred, and uh, jealousy, and whatever hurts us, whatever uh, creates harm to us, whatever puts us into trouble, into danger, and if unfortunately in spite of our sincere effort to prevent it, when it somehow happens to us, when it arises, then we have to make effort to overcome that. That is the second kind of effort. First is the prevention. It is called in Pali Sangvara. Sangvara. Second is to, or if in spite of our effort to prevent it, if it happens, if something unwholesome arises and get into unwholesome situation, we immediately become mindful and then overcome that. Overcome. The third way of uh, uh, third effort is the effort to uh, arouse wholesome mental state. Wholesome means beneficial. Uh, for instance, uh, if we get uh, angry, uh, we try to arouse our practice of metta, loving friendliness. If we lose our temper, we must immediately overcome that and practice patience. Uh, if we are uh, full of jealousy, and that is not how that is not beneficial. It is harmful, and we immediately become mindful and uh, overcome that, and practice patience. So arouse wholesome mental states, wholesome habits, wholesome speech, wholesome behavior. We. With effort, we arouse it. So, <clears throat> and uh, then the last effort is the effort to maintain the wholesome things, wholesome thought, wholesome word. Whenever we start something very good, very beneficial, no matter how small it is, we must continue doing that. It may be a very tiny little thing, uh, but if you keep doing it again and again and again, that becomes a habit. So habitually we do wholesome things. So therefore, uh, becoming uh, the person the doing wholesome things is uh, it can be done in two ways. One is observing precept that is called uh, the five precepts and so forth. We observe this is called uh, rest uh, discipline in Pali called Sikha the Vinaya. There is another kind of discipline. For Sikha Pada Vinaya, that means observing precept, you have to make effort. The other kind of discipline which is more important and more powerful, it remains in our mind, in our entire life, is the restraining or disciplining ourselves, understanding the Dhamma. Understanding the Dhamma, we gradually improve ourselves. Therefore, we need a uh, great uh, effort to do that. As I said, it doesn't come very easily. And then, <coughs> Buddha said, this is a very important uh, sent uh, four sentences to remember. Four very important four sentences. Easy it is for the good to do good. Difficult it is for the evil 
to do good. Easy it is for the evil to do evil. Difficult it is for the good to do evil. I repeat it for you to remember. Since you are children, you can remember. This is simple, very simple. Easy it is for the good to do good. Difficult it is for the evil to do good. Easy it is for the evil to do evil. Difficult it is for the good to do evil. This ve- these four sentences you must remember. So it is easy to do things that are harmful to oneself. Very easy. It is very difficult to do things that are beneficial to oneself. Very easy to get into drugs. But to stay away from that, because there are all kind of people who pretend to be friends, but they're not friends. They uh, can drag you into taking illicit, illegal, unprescribed drugs. <coughs> Very easy. So, in the first place, you have to ignore it. You have to ignore such a such an approach. That's have to do with effort. Ignoring it. If that doesn't work, then uh, divert the mind to something else, something wholesome. And uh, if it, I, I'm just giving you the list of things to do with effort, because I don't. I'm my talk will be only for half an hour. Uh, I'm just giving you the easy. Uh, list to remember. <coughs> then, <coughs> if something uh, unwholesome happens, replace it with wholesome things. We have to make effort. For instance, uh, your mind always uh, uh, tells you to be very stingy. Stinginess is not very good. If we can share, we have to. We can share with others our time, our skill, our effort, uh, our uh, whatever property we can share, uh, our energy, and all these things we can share. So, when uh, stinginess arises, which prevents us from sharing anything, then we immediately remind ourselves with effort to get rid of that stinginess. Then, uh, we ought to remember that any unwholesome thing arises uh, from unwholesome roots. What are the unwholesome roots? I mentioned at my first talk. Unwholesome roots is greed, hatred, and delusion. So we have to uh, uh, reflect on their harmful effects. Uh, overly greedy, being greedy, is uh, very harmful. That always cause us uh, uh, stress, and uh, therefore we have to overcome it. Uh, so a skillfulness we have to emphasize over and over again in our daily life. A skillful or wholesome things to arouse, uh, we have to make effort. Uh, 
as we said we have uh, we have uh, uh, skillful means to overcome our unwholesome state and uh, uh, rouse wholesome mental state uh, until we overcome and destroy unwholesome state it is even very difficult for us to focus our mind on our wholesome things for instance we have to when we try to study if we, when we try to read read if unwholesome things unwholesome thought harmful thought or anger hatred arises in our mind we will be very unhappy we cannot focus our mind when we cannot focus our mind on what we want to do we cannot do it properly so to uh, therefore to we have to uh, maintain those uh, follow those four fold effort Uh, by overcoming and uh, preventing uh, overcoming arousing and wholesome mental state arousing and then uh, maintaining sometimes people when they are inspired by some listening to a talk uh, reading a book or re- receiving some advice Uh, somebody may start uh, with some effort but it very quickly they lose interest and then became again uh, complacent lethargic and not uh, continuing uh, that is not right effort right effort is once we have undertaken something we must persistently continue doing it not uh, uh, become lazy and uh, giving up for any tiny little things uh, sometimes uh, uh, people uh, give up the whole uh, studies suppose you sit for exam you are Uh, you did not get expected marks and uh, you may get uh, more marks for some subjects and uh, very little marks for other subjects then your overall uh, performance is not uh, satisfactory people become so uh, disheartened uh, discouraged sometimes they give up studies but if they make effort to do it better next time they can do it even better than the first time or better than maybe someone else and therefore making effort is always of course this effort has to be wholesome without greed hatred and delusion we are not making effort to do to hurt somebody uh, or hurt ourselves but we make effort correctly so <clears throat> uh, when we are uh, full of energy we have to harness that energy with uh, mindful effort uh, instead of making uh, very sort of hypertension for instance that is not right effort we have to have a patience to uh, rest in ourselves and that patience come from our uh, effort mindful effort and therefore uh, even to Uh, attain a buddhahood the buddha before he attained enlightenment 
he has to make great effort uh, in order to attain that. So, there are so many things we can do with right effort and achieve great success in our life with the right effort. And that has to be balanced, uh, not to get into hypertension or losing our heart and to and fall into complacency, but uh, stay on the course with mindful effort. And that c can help us all our life, even when we are very, very sick, this effort can help us to recover from that sickness. If we, for instance, uh, if you have a surgery, the day after surgery or two days after, doctors ask you to walk. If you don't make effort to walk a little bit and try stay sitting or lying down, you will be very stiff. Your healing process will be very, very slow. Uh, therefore, the doctors advise us to walk and do more and more exercise and then we recover very quickly and therefore effort is especially right effort. In this case, right effort means effort without greed, hatred and delusion in order to make peace and happiness, bring peace and happiness to our life. So I think with this I want to stop this talk and now your turn to ask me questions. <coughs> okay, you can speak up so that I can hear you well. <coughs> Hi, Bhanteji. This is Pravith. Yes, very good. Yes. Um, so earlier you said in the talk that uh, someone may watch something and get inspired by it and uh, do it a couple of times, but then fall unpersistent with it, correct? Uh, Pravit, you are Pravit? Hello? Hello? Are you Pravit? Pravit? Can you repeat your question? What happened? I don't hear you. Hello? Hello, I cannot hear you. Can you speak louder? Hello, Panteji. This is uh, Pravith. I went on Nalit's computer though because my computer wasn't working. Uh huh. Okay. Now I can hear you. Okay. Yeah. So um, earlier you said someone may do something once or twice after watching a video and get inspiration by it, right? Yeah. If somebody does something, yeah. what? Yeah. And then I was just going to ask um when they if they continue with it rather than just relying off of motivation and uh, doing it a couple times and they become persistent with it, does this build discipline? Yeah, if they are persistent in uh, not doing it. Hello? Yeah, hello. Yeah, uh, uh, your question is not very clear because of the... It, it is uh, fragmented, it is not uh, uh, 
coming through very clearly. Um, I was uh, asking if someone doesn't rely off motivation uh -huh. to do something persistently and consistently more than one time, uh -huh. does this build discipline? Yes, then you use your patience, your compassion and your understanding to repeat your suggestion, uh, your uh, way to encourage him. Uh, you, have to, you have to repeat it yourself and with patience and at the same time with compassion. Don't lose your patience. Uh, because sometimes some people are uh, not easy to be motivated. Uh, therefore, with great love and compassion and patience, you continue your effort. Then you will be successful. Okay. Thank okay? you. You are welcome. Any other question, anybody else? <coughs> yeah. How can you, uh, Bhante, I have a question. Yeah. How can you measure effort? How can you measure effort? Yeah. Yeah, of course. If you know that you become more nervous, build up your anxiety, uh, tension, uh, and by trying to make effort, then uh, you know that you are uh, exerting too much. And then you know that uh, you make, uh, you, you, you go to extremes. So we have to uh, maintain the balance uh, with patience we make. Uh, there's no mechanical or uh, I don't think there's a even scientific method to measure the amount of effort we can we must make. But each and every one of us must look at our mind, our life, and uh, ask the question, by making effort, am I going to make me myself nervous and break, become, uh, have a nervous breakdown and build up tension? Ha am I losing my own health? And these are the questions one must ask oneself and slow down. Slow down. And then you know you are you can sleep well. You are uh, not very much uh, full of tension, anxiety, and not too much stress. Then you know that your effort is uh, balanced. Uh, that one has to do by oneself. There is no uh, way uh, that. Uh, somebody can uh, uh, teach except trying oneself to watch one's own life. Okay. Okay, uh, thank you. Pravit, no, Pravit, yes, very good. Good. <laughs> Anybody else has any other question? Abdhruni, can uh, we adults ask questions too? Oh yeah, for the benefit of children, surely. If yeah. children don't ask. 
Hamdruni, can you give advice on how to use effort to overcome procrastination? Okay. Uh, procrastination is can make a person very uh, indecisive uh, because one doesn't have a, a clear vision in mind. And therefore, <coughs> uh, I would say one has to step, take some uh, initial step to start uh, making effort. Uh, start doing it with cautions and patience and mindfulness. One start. And then slowly, mindfully, cautiously approach and continue. Uh, if one keeps simply procrastinating, one would not take initiative to start. Then the person will simply be, uh, sometimes simply remain uh, complacent, lazy. Uh, sometimes people give so many excuses not to do certain things. And it is very easy to give excuses. That's how, that's what happened when, when you keep on procrastination, uh, procrastinating uh, all the time. You don't take an initiative, sort of you lose your guts. Uh, it doesn't mean that we jump into something without uh, understanding, without knowing the uh, the the all uh, the possible uh, variation, possible harm, uh, harms and uh, uh, problems. That's why we have to be very cautious and mindful. Uh, when we start something, then we, if something else happened to us to make it difficult, then we know how to withdraw. For instance, if you, I'm not advising anybody to do a business, but uh, <laughs> when you uh, want to start a business or invest uh, money, uh, you may not invest a whole lot at once. So invest a little bit and watch the market. And then you know how it, uh, you also check the background of where you invest and so forth. And then you start it very slowly and then even if you withdraw quite uh, very quickly, you may not lose very much. In the practice of uh, Dhamma, uh, there is no procrastination. Practice of Dhamma, all we have to do is to understand it and then as we understand, we continue to practice. We are not uh, hurting ourselves when you try to practice Dhamma. Uh, so we are talking about making effort to make our life have successfully spiritually. In the spiritual life, there is no procrastination. As we understand, we pr practice, and uh, if we uh, get into confusion, uh, we can consult our advisors, our uh, people who know better. Materially, we are not going to lose anything. Even spiritually, if we approach our uh, practice with uh, mindfulness, caution, with pr particularly with understanding, there are three factors we have to remember. One is understanding. Second is effort. Third is mindfulness. Understanding, effort, and mindfulness. When we combine these three components, then we will not go wrong in spiritual practice. And these are called cardinal factors of the Noble Eightfold Path. Cardinal factors. Understanding, effort, and mindfulness these three factors. So, in spiritual life, uh, we must understand, if we have these three, we never go wrong. Uh, 
because we start with understand that is why in the noble light soul path right understanding put as number 1 priority number 1 okay <coughs> Did that answer your question? Uh, yes, Hamdruni, Omapin. Thank you. You are welcome. Anybody else, even adults, can ask a question. Last time there were more questions. Uh, this is not difficult subject. This is very easy subject. While waiting, I tell you what the Buddha said. Buddha said, uh, "The suffering is overcome by effort. Virya na dukkhang acheti. Our suffering, our pain, our stress can be overcome by effort." And uh, Buddha proved it. He made effort all his life in order to attain Buddhahood, enlightenment. We in our life, there are many obstacles. Nothing comes to us easy. Nothing comes to us easy. You know, children, as they are growing, they have to be very mindful and make effort to follow the right path. Children, sometimes when parents advise them to do certain right thing, correct thing, with love, and compassion children can children may ignore because they don't understand but if they make effort to understand the understand why parents say this they will not make too many mistakes in life once you make a very serious mistake in your younger days that will affect your entire life and therefore to prevent that happening we have to make effort to listen to adults who have great experience in their life they tell us they try to discipline us from their personal experience of the dangers in life and we have to make effort to understand them. When we choose a lifestyle, we have to make effort. If we are unmindful and chosen wrong livelihood, then we may suffer. So the Buddha said, with effort, we overcome suffering. With effort, we overcome danger. With effort, we become successful. As I mentioned, we try to be the one that Buddha mentioned in this stanza, these four lines that I asked to remember. I want, to, I want you to repeat those four lines for me. 
Do you remember the four lines? Yes. What are the four lines? Tehasa? Tehasa? Um, difficult, it is difficult for the evil to do good. Yes, it is. First one, it is easy for the good to do good. Difficult it is for the evil to do good. Easy it is for the evil to do evil. And difficult it is for the good to do evil. Can you repeat it? I cannot hear you. Any of you, but I, the, the reason why I want you to remember this is we try to be a good to do good easily. We try to be good to be to do good easily. It comes to us naturally as a habit. So the Buddha said, it is uh, easy it is for the good to do good. Difficult it is for the evil to do good. Yes. Um, I forgot the other two. Yeah, other one is it is easy for the evil to do evil. It is easy for the evil to do evil. It is difficult for the good to do evil. Let me repeat it once again for all of you. It is easy for the good to do good. Difficult it is for the evil to do good. Easier it is for the evil to do evil, and difficult it is for the good to do evil. So with effort, we try to be, out of these four lines, we must try to be in what we say in line one and three. One and three. One says, it is easy for the good to do good. It is easy for the, uh, no, one and, uh, I'm sorry, one and uh, the, the fourth line. Difficult it is for the good to do evil. First is, it is easy for the good to do good. Last is, difficult it is for the good to do evil evil. Now, with great effort, we can put into that category of becoming uh, one that can do good easily and becoming one that find it difficult to do evil, not the other person. And therefore, effort comes handy right effort comes handy to shape our life. Otherwise, we will, we will be very unsuccessful and we will always have some problems and all our life we may unnecessarily live with tension, anxiety, worry and fear. With mindful effort, right effort, we can prevent all these things from happening. That's a number one. Second, we can 
with mindful effort, we can overcome such tensed, uptight state of life, state of mind. Then we make the life easy, very comfortable, peaceful, less stress, less problem, less harm, less suffering. And we have to start that. Once we take initiative to do, to live uh, easily, peacefully, happily, we must make effort to maintain that. Even though obstacles can put our, on our way, we will be able to overcome those difficulties very easily with mindfulness, understanding and effort. And this is therefore absolutely necessary uh, factor of the Noble Eightfold Path. And uh, Buddha asked us to do right, to have right effort because it is possible he never asked us to do anything that we cannot do. He repeatedly said, because I never ask you anything, I never ask you to do anything that you cannot do. Out of utmost compassion, with wisdom, Buddha asked us to do right thing because we can do it. We can ask uh, when somebody is making effort, that person will be able to destroy all the evils, evil thoughts, evil words and evil deeds, just like uh, an elephant breaks a house made up of bamboo trees. Bamboos are so fragile. It is very easy for a powerful elephant to crush them, crush that house with his power. Similarly, when one has effort, with that effort, that person can destroy all evil, unwholesome, painful state of mind. And when Buddha <coughs> sat under the Bodhi tree to attain enlightenment, he made this effort. He said, let my blood and flesh wither away. Let the body reduce to skeleton. I will not get up from this seat without attaining full enlightenment. That is the kind of determination, that is the kind of effort he made to be successful in his practice. He did that with mindfulness because he, f he has been practicing all alone until he came to this last stage where he knew that he definitely will attain enlightenment and therefore he made this effort. Similarly, when we can have a vision and strive and work for that vision with effort, all of us must have a goal. We cannot attain the goal without effort. It has to be right effort. Effort we make with mindfulness and understanding. We must know our steps and we don't try to take the wrong steps. When we are mindful, uh, mindful and make right effort, we always proceed with effort cautiously, 
until we attain our goal or gain our achieve our success and therefore it is very important for us to remember right to practice right effort anybody has any other question <coughs> Okay. No questions. Okay. If you don't have any question, we can end the session and try to remember what I said. And I hope uh, everything is recorded, and you uh, uh, use this material for your writing. Okay. I see you next Sunday. Okay. Bye. Thank you, Bante. Bye, Sanai. Thank you, Pante. Yeah. You are welcome. Good night.